Hello again and welcome to the fourth lecture in this series. This is a lecture on stability and control. Stability is the tendency of an aircraft to return to its original attitude after a disturbance. Now, contrary to popular myth, aircraft are generally not completely stable, nor do they have to be. It's enough that the motions are slow enough for a pilot to be able to handle them. There are trade-offs. For instance, if an aircraft is too stable in sideslip, it will suffer from a sickening motion called Dutch roll. Aircraft can be made stable. For instance, free flight model aircraft are usually quite stable. But for passenger aircraft, we normally have to live with some instability in return for comfort. To go back to the, begin the very beginning of things, the Wrights created aircraft that were very responsive to the pilot, but had little stability. Note the an anhedral, that's the negative dihedral on the original Wright flyer. One would have to be quite vigilant in keeping the wings level, as there, there would have been no side slip stability at all. Reportedly, longitudinal stability was also pretty much neutral. These machines were a real handful to fly but the pilot did feel totally in control. In contrast, here we have Santos's, Santos Dumont's 14 bis. This was an ultra-stable aircraft. Directional control must have been quite poor. For instance, it looks like there's no roll control at all. The pilot had some longitudinal control, but he was really just more of a passenger. So what provides stability to the aircraft? The most straightforward component of stability is the fin, which provides stability in yaw. The fin acts much as the feathers do on an arrow. As long as the CG is well forward of the central lateral, lateral pressure, the aircraft will be stable in yaw and will fly straight. The tailplane looks as if it is much the same as the fin but in fact its behavior is more complicated. In normal flight the fin carries no loads, but the tailplane is designed to carry aerodynamics in all phases of flight, so its effect is heavily dependent on the position of the central gravity. The tailplane can be behind the main wing or in front of the main wing in the so-called canard configuration. But the rules of stability dictate that the front wing has to be at a higher angle of attack than the rear wing. It's not very efficient to have a small wing in front working very hard, with a big wing behind just loafing along, so canards tend to be much larger than normal trailing tailplanes. In fact, as the designs are optimized, canards tend to grow and the main wing tends to shrink until the aircraft begins to look much more like a normal conventional aircraft. Also note that the loads on a normal trailing tailplane do not always have to be down, as is the conventional wisdom. It's possible to load and trim an aircraft such that both surfaces are providing positive lift and still providing stability. Stability in side slip has more than one component. Typically, side slip stability is provided by dihedral. A side slip creates an airflow that causes the upwind wing to be at a higher incidence than the downwind wing, rolling the aircraft out of the slip. Similarly, a swept wing aircraft has the upwind leading edge more at right angles to the flow than the downwind wing, also providing a correcting rolling moment. For a high wing aircraft, the fuselage interf interference in a side slip provides locally higher incidence on the upwind wing rolling the aircraft. So now let's have a look at the modes of stability. You'll have heard of the term static and dynamic stability. Static stability is the tendency for the aircraft to return to its original path after a disturbance. Dynamic stability is the tendency for, motion of, for motions caused by a disturbance to gradually dissipate. You cannot have dynamic stability unless the, the motion is statically stable, but static stability does not necessarily mean that the motion is dynamically stable. Actually, from a practical standpoint, these classifications are not very useful. What matters more are the time scales of the motions. If the time scales are long enough, a pilot can cope 
even if there's some instability. Now talking about the modes, the short period oscillation is what you get if you kick the rudder or push the stick. The, the aircraft very rapidly returns to forward flight. The motion has a very short period and is very heavily damped. The second mode is a long period oscillation in speed and altitude called the fugoid. Then there is Dutch roll, a motion in yaw and roll, named after the rolling gait of a skater. Finally, we have spiral stability, which is the ability to return to straight flight after dropping a wing. Now examining these modes of stability in detail, let's have a look at the short period stability in pitch and yaw. If you disturb the flight in pitch or yaw, the aircraft rapidly returns to its flight path and the motion is heavily damped. This is a good thing because the time scales involved in the movement are much too small to be dealt with by human reactions. It is the center of gravity position that determines the short period stability in pitch. The, the aircraft has to be loaded inside the CG limits if it is to be at all controllable. Your stability also depends on CG position, but much less critically so. Um, modern fighters with onboard computers are able to operate with no short period stability simply because the computer reactions are fast enough. You don't have that luxury, so you really need to watch your CG position. There is a center of gravity position where the aircraft is neutrally stable in short period motion. It's found in test flight by measuring stick forces and movements required to pull extra Gs at different center of gravity positions and then extrapolating the curve back to the CG position for neutral stability. Once we have that CG position for neutral stability uh, we then define a margin of safety called the static margin, which defines the aftmost allowable central gravity position. The forward CG limit is usually fixed by the ability to rotate the nose for takeoff and landing. As stick forces increase with gross weight, there is often that sloping portion to the front of the CG limit at higher gross weights. And finally, the top of the envelope is given by the maximum gross weight, which is a structural or performance limitation. So now let's have a look at the fugoid. The fugoid motion may or not be stable. It involves a slow climb with decreasing speed, followed by a slow descent at increasing speed and repeats ad infinitum. The period is about 30 seconds for a light aircraft. Even when the motion is stable or limiting, the pilots can generally cope without too much trouble, though maintaining altitude can be a little bit tricky. Cirrus aircraft have a reputation for exhibiting a fugoid under certain circumstances and that makes maintaining altitude without the use of an autopilot a bit of a chore on those aircraft. Now let's look at Dutch roll. Dutch roll is caused by too much stability and side slip. It's a rolling and turning oscillation, reminiscent of the motion of a long-distance skater, and roughly the same period. In Dutch roll, the aircraft snakes around the sky. The aircraft yaws and rolls to the side, a movement that eventually self-corrects, but goes past the straightened level into a yaw and roll on the other side. This happens more or less at constant altitude. The period is in the order of a few seconds, but the motion is remarkably difficult to control. Dutch roll is usually in a trade-off with spiral stability. 
Model aircraft for which the sickening motion of Dutch roll is not a problem usually have much more dihedral than passenger aircraft. This gives good spiral stability, but you'll often notice the wings on a free flight model continuously rocking, which is their, their version of Dutch roll. Dutch roll will make you, you and your passengers sick very quickly, which is why it tends to be eliminated at the cost of loss of spiral stability. Uh, large aircraft that are not rigid and can flex significantly often have their own subsets of Dutch roll occurring in the tail. The Boeing 747 suffered from a weaving in the tail section that was eventually cured by an automatic yaw damper. Dihedral, sweep back and high wing position all enhance side slip stability. But it is possible to have too much of a good thing as far as side slip stability is concerned. Too much introduces Dutch roll instability. So you'll see normally that high wing swept wing aircraft will also have marked anhedral or negative dihedral to reduce side slip stability. You can see that here in the Harrier aircraft. Note that the tailplane also has anhedral to help reduce side slip stability. Now if you don't want Dutch roll then often your only choice is to accept some spiral instability and that's what happens in practice. So most light aircraft have no spiral stability. Try releasing the stick in level flight and giving the rudder a kick. After the aircraft rapidly returns to forward flight because of its short term yaw stability, there will be a gentle balanced turn that if left on its own steepens and tightens with constantly increasing speed as the nose drops. This process is very gradual in the, in the beginning, so a pilot with a good horizontal reference corrects almost unconsciously for it at all times. But this is what causes the famous graveyard spiral that can occur when VFR pilots lose the horizon in IMC conditions. The spiral tightens and speed increases as the aircraft heads down until there is a structural failure or the aircraft hits the ground. Note that spiral instability is classic static instability. This disturbance does not cause any kind of oscillation but just a steady deviation with no natural limitation at all. And almost all our aircraft have it. So watch that horizon at all times and keep out of IMC unless you're instrument rated. This is one of the important lessons of the day. So that concludes the formal part of these lectures. Please feel free to add comments or to ask questions, which I will do my best to answer.